Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss whether Hermes ties are worth it. We talk about the famous printed ties with animal prints, horse prints, the woman ones, as well as scarf ties, the pros and cons, and whether they're worth your $180 or not. <laughs> In a world of iconic menswear, Hermes ties are certainly up there with a Burberry trench coat, which, by the way, if you want to know if a Burberry trench coat is worth it or not, please check out this video here. Generally, you know you're doing something right if an entire industry is here to fake your products, and that's the case with Hermes ties. Finding a used one is almost like a gamble if you don't know what to look for and stay tuned for another video where we discuss how you can identify a fake Hermes tie from a genuine one. For this video, we'll assume you buy one directly from Hermes so you know what you get is the real deal. In the US, Hermes ties have a price tag of $180. In Europe, it's a little less. In Australia, it's a little more. But overall, it's right around that price point. By the way, the brand is called Hermes, not Hermes. And to learn more about how to pronounce luxury brands, please check out this video here. In order to be able to determine if an Hermes time is worth it or not, we briefly have to take a look at the history of the house. Hermes as a brand was founded in 1837 by the German-born Thierry Hermes. Initially, it was a manufacturer of harnesses and bridles for the carriage trade. By 1855, they won their first price for their quality merchandise, and soon thereafter, they would start expand their products and include things like saddle and leather goods. Now, I could fill hours with the intricate history of Hermes, but in terms of ties and silk, the home of the Hermes silk since 1937 has been the city of Lyon. The first silk design Hermes created was actually not for a tie, but for a scarf. They're probably even more famous for women than the ties are for men, and they're typically in 70 centimeters by 70 centimeters. That very first pattern showed some women playing a game. The pattern was called Dame Blanche. In 1978, the fifth generation of family owners came in and Jean-Louis Dumas became the chairman of Hermes as well as the creative director. Under his reign, Hermes switched the focus on silk products, leather goods, and ready-to-wear goods. Over the years, Hermes has produced thousands of designs and they've become iconic and very recognized and are worn by Wall Street bankers, London businessmen, Russian oligarchs, or emerging Chinese upper-class men. So with that being said, is an Hermes tie worth $180? Well, first we have to determine what you get for that money. The tie production, especially for the printed ties, is vertically integrated. Hermes has their own silkworm plantations in southern Brazil, and from there they control the spinning of the yarn, the weaving of the yarn, the designs of the silk, the printing, as well as the sales all the way to the customer. All designs are exclusively designed for Hermes and you can't find them elsewhere unless they're knockoffs, of course. Every season, 10 new ones are added as well as old ones are reissued and overall, they've probably created more than 75,000 different color schemes. So between the designs and the colors, there's really a rich archive. Hermes is known for their printed ties, especially for their often whimsical animal print ties for horse-inspired prints, as well as geometrical prints and small micro patterns. All of their ties are silk screen printed, which is an old way to do it. Back in the day, it was actually done with hand blocks. Today, that is not done anymore. Today, they use screens, which are a lot more labor intensive and therefore more costly than digital printing. So why does Hermes still use silk screen printing? They believe it produces richer colors and a more high quality product. And I couldn't agree with them more, which is why we at Fort Belvedere make all of our silks in a screen print and not digital print. All famous Hermes tie are printed on a rather lightweight silk twill that has a little bit of gum added back to it. So it has a really soft touch that is not dry at all. When you touch an Hermes tie, it has a very typical feel. It's not super gummy like old matter silk ties, but it's also not like a jacket woven tie. 
It's something in between that is special for Hermes and that they want to keep secret, which is one of the reasons it's vertically integrated. A true connoisseur will likely always be able to determine whether it's a fake or not based on the way the silk feels in their hand. It's hard to describe, but it's something you have to develop over time. Again, stay tuned for a guide on how you can identify a fake Hermes tie from a real one. Every Hermes tie is made out of two panels of silk, not three like most ties, but also not like one like very expensive ties. The only difference is basically that you need more silk the fewer pieces you use for each individual tie. Making a tie out of two pieces is totally fine and has no impact on the quality. The next step, the fabric is cut. Hermes ties often feature specific model numbers and the logo printed in the silk and because of that they have to be cut very accurately, otherwise the finished product won't have lines that are very neat. That's another way to make it difficult for fakers because oftentimes they get these little details wrong, but Hermes always gets them right. Once the tie is cut, you add two layers of interlining that gives the tie the feel and the springiness. Hermes ties are three-fold ties and they're hand-sewn with a thread that is 170 centimeters long. That's about five foot and seven inches. All Hermes ties contain a little loop at the bottom and because of that loop stitch, ties are flexible. Many quality ties are sewn in that way and so I'm not surprised to see that from an Hermes tie. Overall, if there's one thing about Hermes ties, I would say that they pay very great attention to detail and they focus on quality. It's even little things, such as the label, which sits eight inches from the bottom and is sewn on in four spots, or the model number in its little box, which is neatly aligned with the edge and not crooked. Also, the keeper tag is woven and not printed and has very specific elements that are different with the different ties. So a woven tie will have a different label than a printed animal tie, which is different again to a heavy printed twill silk. The same is true for the backside tip lining of the tie. With printed ties, it's a solid color versus with woven ties, it's a kind of woven age symbol that you see. And again, every tie is slightly different and only Hermes knows what they do for each specific tie. Fakers on the other hand don't, and so they often get it mixed up. So objectively, when you wear a mess tie, you get a high quality product. What you don't get is a seven fold, eight fold, nine fold or 10 fold tie. You also don't get a tie that comes in very many widths by default. Most Hermes ties are eight centimeters wide. They have some that are seven centimeters and some knit ties that are less. In this day and age, it's hard to find a nine centimeter Hermes tie. Also, in terms of length, Hermes ties are rather limited. Their general tie is about 60 inches long or 152 centimeters. I say about because a tie is always cut on the bias, which makes it very flexible. But when you lay it down, it's a little stretchy. And so you never get the exact measurement from each tie to another. Online in the store, they have a very small section of ties that are longer, but they do not have ties for shorter men, which is a shame because if you're a shorter man, you need a tie that is shorter, otherwise you end up with a large tie knot that simply doesn't flatter your silhouette. Because of that, at Fort Belvedere, we created ties in short, regular, and long, and not just for certain models, but for all the models. You're also somewhat limited in terms of variety with Hermes ties. Yes, they have many patterns, many prints, they come in quite a few colors, at the same time, they're always printed on the same silk twill. If you look at Hermes's woven ties, they're usually small jacket patterns, some geometrical patterns, the occasional stripe, but you don't find elaborate stripes there. You don't find rep ties. You don't find grenadine ties or mohair ties, wool ties. They sometimes have cashmere ties, but again, it's very limited. On the other hand, if you want to experiment more with your tie silks and maybe have a shantung fabric or a grenadine wool silk mohair blend, Hermes is not the brand for you. So are Hermes ties worth it? Of course the answer is, it depends. If you're someone who really likes printed whimsical motifs, these little 
animal prints, then Hermes is definitely the way to go. Also, if you're looking for more unusual colors, such as fuchsia ties or chartreuse green, or maybe some orange tones, Hermes will likely have a shade that you can get. Also, if you're a Wall Street banker or if you work in finance and you wanna fit in with your company culture, an Hermes tie is certainly the way to do that. That being said, personally, I'm not a big fan of whimsical motifs on ties and I prefer different textures, so Hermes ties are not the ideal tile for me. I have a bunch of them, including vintage ones and new ones, but frankly, I don't wear them a whole lot anymore. The ones I wear the most are probably the woven ties that are somewhat simple and don't look like a typical Hermes tie. With many other luxury products, you pay a lot for the name, but you get average to mediocre quality. On the other hand, with an Hermes tie, you certainly pay for the name, but you also get a quality product. On top of that, genuine Hermes ties usually yield quite high prices even when they're used. Of course, they have to be in pristine condition, which ties rarely are if you actually wear them. And on top of that, you have to prove that it's actually a genuine product, which can be very hard unless you have the specific receipt with a photo of the tie. Of course, if you give all the Hermes ties you don't want any longer to a store, they have to mark them up, and ultimately, you don't get much for used Hermes ties anyways. Also, if you're shorter than six foot or 183 centimeters, Hermes ties may be too long for you, and all you can do is tie a really big knot, which may often not work with your head size. Also, if you're a really tall man and you want more variety in your ties, Hermes is not the right place for you. I also think they're not worth buying used unless you know very well what you're doing. Otherwise, you may pay top dollar for what turns out to be a fake. Personally, I also like ties to have different widths. My favorite width is about nine centimeters or three and a half inches, and that's not a niche served by Hermes at all. Also, building up an Hermes tie collection can be rather expensive. If you buy 12 ties, you're already down more than $2,000. Now, they certainly use high quality materials, including their silk, but when I was looking for silks for our Ford Belvedere ties, I met weavers who would actually produce jacquard woven silks for Hermes, and we get our silks from the same vendor at the same quality standards. Yet, for Belvedere ties, it costs a lot less, especially if you buy more and get the volume discount. Hermes, on the other hand, doesn't offer any volume discount. At the end of the day, to me personally, Hermes ties are mostly not worth it, simply because I prefer a nine centimeter width and I prefer different textures. On top of that, I want ties in different lengths because depending on the outfit and the rise of my trousers, I don't always want a consistent tie length and Hermes is not able to deliver that to me. That being said, if you're about six foot tall or 180 centimeters, Hermes ties will work for you in height and if you like their motives and their flashy colors, it's definitely an option for you. Bear in mind that you can always sell them at a higher price if you don't like them anymore. Of course, only if you can prove that it's a genuine product and not a fake. To learn how you can identify the real deal Hermes tie from a fake, please check out this video here soon. In today's outfit, I'm of course wearing an Hermes tie. However, it's not a typical printed one, but a jacquard woven one in a larger herringbone with yellow and gray. It changes the color with the light in a very sophisticated way, and because of that, I like the tie quite a lot. It ties a nice knot, and it's overall a good product. That being said, it's a vintage tie, and they no longer produce this anymore. I'm combining it with a typical finance or Wall Street banker outfit that consists of a white self-striped dress shirt with French cuffs. I'm wearing gold monkey fist knot cufflinks from Fort Belvedere, as well as a ring with a citrine stone that is also yellow gold and works well with the cufflinks. The suit is from Ralph Lauren Purple Label. It is kind of power suit inspired with a softer silhouette. It was made by Chester Berries several years ago and it is a typical business suit in the sense that it has these kind of rope stripes that are bold, that are light on a navy background. It is double-breasted with white lapels that have a certain amount of belly. The pants are cuffed and pleated. The socks are shadow striped in yellow and blue, so they work together 
and create some contrast to the black Oxford shoes. At the same time, they pick up the yellow tones of the tie and the citrine ring. The Hermes tie is no longer available and neither is the suit, but you can still find the monkey fist nut cufflinks, the white linen pocket square in a TV fold, as well as the boutonniere and the socks in our shop right here. <laughs> Thank you.